First podcast for 2024, and we're starting with a huge name, Dr. Wallace Nichols. He's a New York Times bestselling author for his book, The Blue Mind. He's a activist, he's a marine biologist, and he's an actual marine biologist, not like George Costanza. Um, his book, Blue Mind, um, I'm just rereading it, or I'm actually re-listening to it um, as an audio book. For someone who loves the water, it is the definitive read for those of us that love the ocean, love rivers, love taking a shower, love an ice bath. Um, just quickly before we, we kick off with, um, he likes to be called Jay, um, my three children are at home at the moment. We're on school holidays and they were feral yesterday and we couldn't get to the beach because of all the rainfall, but we put them on the trampoline and we ran a sprinkler underneath and it was like they'd been to meditation when they came inside. That's enough from me, but this is the sort of theme that we're going to pick up on today because I can't speak highly enough of this book. Dr. Wallace Nichols, thank you for joining The Bear Facts. Absolutely, my pleasure. And uh, thanks for that great parenting tip, but I'll, I'll pass it along. <laughs> that's epic. Sprinkler under a trampoline. That's <laughs> if you new to me. A and it's, of water. it's amazing. Amazing. Before yeah. we get into your amazing book, can we get just go down a little bit of a path? Where, where did you grow up and, and how did you get so into the ocean and the water and, and all its, its benefits? Well, I was uh, born in New York City in Manhattan and uh, spent the first part of my life in the greater New York area. Um, and all of it, you know, the, the Jersey Shore, Coney Island, um, the rivers, uh, reservoirs, um, little dinky backyard pool that we had when I was a kid, just, you know, vinyl lined little, it seemed like a big deal at the time, but I, I saw it. Uh, as an adult, and I you know, was astounded at how small it was. I, I think if I had bounced and jumped off the diving board, I could have cleared the entire pool and ended up on the deck on the other side. Uh, nothing, you know, kind of to your point there in the beginning is nothing particularly spectacular, special about that pool, but it was the stuff of dreams for, you know, for a little guy. And uh, so I grew up exploring freshwater creeks and ponds and fishing and camping and uh, just gravitating to the water. Last one out of the pool, first one in the pool. Um, and that I think was a source of, you know, my blue mind I didn't call it that of course, uh, but I love the water and I wanted to align whatever was next with, with the water. So um I also, I guess, probably an important point, I, I stuttered a lot. I was kind of an introvert. Uh, we didn't call it that then. People just said, why are you so shy? And I just would shrug. And maybe I, you know, I would think in my head, I'm not shy. I'm just paying attention. I can remember thinking that as an answer. But because I stuttered, I didn't want to say that out loud. Um, so in the water, I felt a lot better. Uh, still do. <laughs> Uh, people don't ask you too many questions underwater. <laughs> like literally no questions are asked underwater. Um, don't have to loud and therefore you don't stutter. And uh, I was adopted as a, as, a, as a child. And so I had big questions about life, uh, about origins, about family, uh, eventually about genetics. And, you know, those questions to drag our uh, as an introverted kid. So, you know, it wasn't traumatic. It was, I was just more comfortable um, in the water. And so there was that pull always um, from a very young age. Uh, and I relate to that when I, when I meet kids who um, are either on the spectrum or dealing with anxiety, uh, um, who are more comfortable in nature or in the water and I um, now I can you know, I can speak with their parents or their caregivers and their grandparents about that 
Uh, so I started out there and decided I need to be a marine biologist uh, or a pro surfer. The pro surfer path was not really happening. Um, and I went that route and uh, studied sea turtles, um, studied wildlife ecology, evolutionary biology, economics, um, to, to try to become a useful, uh, a useful part of the effort to protect and restore uh, the waters, the oceans. And uh, so that kind of, yeah, that's the background. Um, but I've moved around a lot. You know, I, I call myself a North American because I've lived all over North America and the U.S. and both coasts and the Midwest and the Southwest and Mexico, all over Mexico. And so, um, um, yeah, I, that's a rambly answer to, <laughs> to a simple question. But I, yeah, I feel like an earthling at this point in my life, given the ambiguity uh, ambiguity of home at the moment. Jay, what does the ocean do for you when you go into it? Uh, well, it depends on the day. <laughs> sometimes it's it's a, an overdue break. Sometimes it's medicine. Sometimes it's a place I go to think clearly about a, a problem or um, a creative project. Um, sometimes it's romantic, uh, if I'm not alone. <laughs> um, as a dad, it's it's where I connect with my kids. I know their favorite thing is swimming with me my favorite thing in, in my life is swimming with them uh, or just being in the water and any doing anything. Um, and now that they're both in college, those opportunities are, you know, drastically decreased. And so uh, any chance, you know, to get our blue minds on together are, are really precious. Um, and, you know, in, in that regard, they've, they're our best memories. You know, looking backwards now on the on the past twenty two years uh, that I've been a dad, um, clearly no no question, our time together in the water uh, are collectively our favorite memories. Um, hope to build some more of those. <laughs> Not done. Um, yeah, yeah, all those things. Probably some I didn't say, but. Um, it's also a source of um, endless fascination, and you know this conversation. It, it's a source of this conversation. It's a source of connection to ideas and um, talking about water and the ocean with new people who have their perspectives. Um, keeps my mind nimble. You know, I, I, I learn so much um, doing a, you know a conversation or an interview or a podcast or just hanging out with someone who studies some aspect of the human mind uh, or uh, nature. Um, so it's a, it's a, such a massive source of intellectual fulfillment as well. Um, I haven't, I don't think I've ever articulated that this way, but it is, it's um, that's such an important part of my life and, the way I want to live. Uh, uh, it's such a gift to have something you're passionate and interested in that you can share and discuss with cool people like you. <laughs> you know, I mean, Jay, that's what I your book, The Blue Mind. So I really love, there was a part about, I'm not sure what beach you were mentioning, but how everyone crowds in. So we could, we could generalize it. So people camp by the beach. People buy great big mansions by the beach. Um, people work really hard so they can go somewhere flash. But they're ultimately going for the same result, aren't they? To be near the water. <laughs> so if you're <laughs> drinking a fancy cocktail or you're making a fire on the beach, if we break it down, as long as you have your bathers and your towel, you're pretty much set, aren't you? Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's, uh, it's true wealth, true richness, true... Know, a true symbol of them all's good i made it i'm here and you're right it doesn't matter if you're in the back of a mansion or a resort or a remote beach at the end of a road um you're facing the water and uh, every you know it's a, it's also a great equalizer you know mm. you, 
you got you've got very little on and so you can't show off really you're not driving anything well maybe a mega yacht yeah i mean really we're, we're talking about the beach yeah uh you know it's not if you have a surfboard or something you're not really just like comparing sizes of surfboard or uh, it's it's very very much an equalizer when you get out there um which we need you know we have all this bling we show off with uh on land and online and when you get out there and strip down to nearly nothing you know everybody sees everything and you're just a you know a hunk of flesh at the ocean you know so um it's humbling in a good way. And I think we humans right now need as much of that as we can get. Um, during lockdown, where I live, I've never seen so many people take up cold water swimming. It was, uh, to use an analogy that Americans would understand as well, it was like Grand Central Station every morning. Just, I think people actually, now that we're back into it, miss it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it was uh, it was the same. I mean, I, it was the same around the world. I would say swimming, cold water swimming. If if you were lucky enough to have access to a boat of any kind, canoe, a kayak, a stand up paddle board, um, and and you know, a sailboat, uh, a pool, anything you could jump in and experience. You know what we call blue mind, but the full sensory experience of water. Uh, you fared better. Um, it's very clear, um, physically and emotionally and socially, you were in a better place during that lockdown period than those who could get there. Um, and people got it. I mean, I, I I struggled to explain Blue Mind for years, and then all of a sudden, during the pandemic, it made sense. It clicked, mm. and now the concept is sort of on fire if you will <laughs> weird metaphor but um it's easier to explain it with that story that you just shared you know people get it they, they needed it they craved it jay can you can you talk to us about your book blue mind what is blue mind well it is at its most basic it's it's two words uh it's a phrase that uh has become very useful to explain something that it is ancient and universal which is the mildly meditative state that water slips us into and um it's not a new idea it's a new name for one of the oldest ideas and apparently we didn't have a good name for it which is why this name has stuck uh so well um it is allowed people to explain something about themselves that's important to be able to explain to the people they care to their employer <laughs> to their spouse to their friends and kids um, and so it's basically uh, our our deep human mammalian neurological psychological response to this thing called water uh, which is not niche not unimportant in any way because water is the basis of all life uh it's the single defining feature of our planet uh, we're made mostly of water we come out of the water uh, we all spend nine months underwater to begin our lives don't remember a lot about that but i bet it was great uh and so having a name for this thing that is so compelling and so core is good so when you don't have a name for something, it may be underappreciated and undervalued. So naming it has turned out to be a way to better appreciate this set of emotions um, and to properly value both the feelings, but also the water that provides it. And I think um, that's where that's where my motivation really comes from. I care a lot about human health and wellness. I care equally for the water's health and wellness. And uh, we've undervalued water and each other. And as a result, we've done bad things uh, 
all over the place to each other and to the waters. Uh, so on, on the human side, we've mistreated each other based on gender and ideology and race and skin color religion. and all kinds of religion. Yes, very much so. Um, and when we undervalue fellow humans, bad, bad things always happen. And history is quite clear on that. Uh, same thing is true about nature. When we undervalue lakes or rivers or oceans, we wreck them. We just wreck them. And um, I think Blue Mind helps us revalue, properly value uh, the water. And um, I, I've seen each other. You know, when we spend time in the water together, we it's easier to find each other's humanity. Um, that's lovely when that happens. Jay, um, there's a, a large collective of us that swim in Victoria, which is Southern Australia. Um, and there's all different groups that we swim in. And there's a quote from one of the guys, Evan Roberts, who he's in advertising, quite a high pressure job. But he talks about when he goes into the water, he said, I don't like the person that goes in, but I love the person that comes out. And do, do you think you spoke about it earlier? Are we, is it a, are we rebirthing when we go into the ocean? Yeah. To come out? Cause I, I said to my wife, Sal, who also loves the ocean, you don't see many people coming out of the ocean sad. Everyone comes out with a smile <laughs> on their face. Well, unless you've been bitten by a shark or right. <laughs> Ray, you come out pretty happy, don't you? Yeah, almost universally. And yeah, obviously, if you're injured or have a bad experience, that's, that's a different category. But um, the if you put the prefix re, re in front of a whole lot of words, so renew, rebirth, reset, so that it's a lot of that going on in the water. And uh, uh, because we're, you know, we're we bang ourselves around on land. We're overstimulated. The red mind of modern life is these high pressure jobs. Sorry to the, the listeners. We've had a technical glitch there, which we'll fix up. But Jay was just talking about, as you say, you put an RE in front of so many things, rebirth, renew. Um, it really, uh, my wife, if I'm ever stressed, sends me across the road, almost like go and reset. It's, it's just amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's that it's, um, and then when you come back from your, your water time, your, your interaction with her, the first email you send is more clear. Mm -hmm. It's kinder, be more creative, uh, than the one, the interaction or the email that preceded jumping in the, in the water. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's goofy, simple. It's almost uh, so basic that you dismiss the whole conversation, but it works so well and is so desperately needed by so many people today that I think it's this is one of the most important topics um, that on earth at the moment because the, our health, uh, our physical but also our emotional and social well-being uh, is in a crisis uh, and so are the waters and so when we can combine these ideas and the solutions it's regenerative yet another re uh, another reword uh, creates right. a reg we are in a real bit of strife at, with we're so complex aren't we and we've made so many issues for ourselves uh, it's there's a there's a police officer in uh, Victoria by the name of Barry Randall who started a, a thing called Operation Soul Serve. And he takes broken first responders and he takes them surfing. And uh, it's just amazing. And, and it works yeah. well. Yeah. 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 What Jay, what what's our solution for what we've done to the ocean? How do we fix that? Like it's so bad and damaged. Yeah, there's a there's quite a long list of threats uh, of messes that each have a a list of solutions. So um, I'm gonna so my answer may sound pretty optimistic. Uh, if you were hoping for gloom and doom, you're not gonna really get it from me. No, um, no positive good, positive <laughs> good. good. <laughs> uh, 
but I think it, you know, we could go into you know, the overfishing and, and climate change and sea level rise and, you know, coastal development and um, ocean acidification and plastic pollution. And, you know, the list goes on. Deep sea mining at the moment is a hot one. Uh, I think for the time that I have here, my contribution is back to that question about the value equation and, and up, updating our ocean story and fixing the broken value equation. And I think that um, Blue Mind helps with that. And I, I truly and firmly believe that when we start telling a better ocean story, that's not the 1992 UNESCO story that says the ocean is important because it has biodiversity, regulates climate, uh, gives us jobs, um, covers 71% of the planet, and gives us oxygen. Those are all very, very important things, but um, that are not motivating people, right? So the what's missing from the list of the things we've discussed earlier, um, joy, uh, connection, romance, peace, a sense of freedom, the, all the R, R E words, all the re's, the reset, the rebirth, uh, and turns out we have really amazing science to back up all of that. So if we were telling a better ocean story to every grade school kid um, all the way through their lives, and they understood their blue mind, wherever they are in the world, then their relationship, like those first responders, if, if, those first responders who are at the end of their, of their, of their rope, they're in gray mind. And I've worked with a number of people uh, and have been there myself who felt that way. Um, if the ocean saves your life and you're a first responder and you are somebody who serves from their heart for a living, guess what? You're going to become an ocean warrior mm. and a really good one, super badass ocean warrior. I've seen that. That gives me hope. So when we connect those dots and people who feel like life isn't worth living and get it, get back the to live. And they say the ocean and my mates helped me do that. Um, they're super likely to sign up for beach cleanups and, and vote pro ocean and uh, become advocates and activists for nature. Uh, and we're seeing that. So that's kind of the, that regenerative feedback loop that we're creating and it's real i mean it's it's formidable i mean people who whose lives are saved by a lake a river an ocean um they will they will run through walls <laughs> you know mm. um the veterans that i work with um is a group called force blue and they are special ops veterans um trained highly trained in aquatics uh, techniques. And when their skill set is repurposed to save coral reefs, to protect sea turtles, to remove in invasive species, they, they go for it. And they feel better. And, you know, if they're struggling with anxiety and depression and post-traumatic stress and addiction, um, doing this helps. It's not, it's not a magic solution. It's not a silver bullet. Um, but I've seen it work a lot. And, um, you know, the awe and the wonder that we get when we're out there in the water, under the water, on the water, even next to it, um, turns out it makes us stronger, it makes us more resilient, uh, makes us feel small but in a good way. Mm. And there is a body of research on, on awe, you know, the neuropsychology of awe. And it's very clear that it's, it's, it's a good thing. Um, living an awe-less life is not a good thing. Um, and it turns out the greatest source of awe is the ocean mm. on this water planet. So start connecting those dots and it's, it turns out awe also builds our compassion and our empathy. Um, 
and that's coming straight out of the research. So if the ocean is the greatest source of awe and awe makes us more resilient and more compassionate, damn, let's do it, you know, uh, spread it around. Yeah. So getting people to recognize we shouldn't be damaging our source, should we? Right. Should we pick care right. for it? If you, um, so say you're um, at a dinner party and you're having a discussion with someone and Can we break down a couple of dot points scientifically on what it actually does for us, the blue mind? Because like, it is, I mean, your, your book says it all, but just for the listeners, can we talk a little bit about some of the scientific things and some of the actual physiological benefits that we are getting by interacting with the ocean, river, lake? Yeah, absolutely. So I, if we're at a dinner party, usually I'll start with um, asking the conversants uh if it's a group or the person I'm speaking with, what's your water? What's the water that lights you up? What's the water you first fell in love with? Tell me about it. What's its name? Uh, who took you there first? Who introduced you to that water that makes your life great? Uh, and then listen, and I haven't met anybody who hasn't had an answer. And 99% of the times the answer is, rock <laughs> they're just good stories and everybody's carrying that around and many times people have never been asked that question uh and the and answering that question for a lot of people brings up memories nostalgia um good times good feelings so that's this that's a, always my starting point because i almost don't have to explain blue mind after that <laughs> Uh, but then we can unpack the science. Say, well, here's how here's how that worked. It's it's stunning that you're walking around with that set of memories and stories and um, longings, and uh, there it's neurochemistry, uh, it's psychology, it's it's understandable, and it's something you want to repeat, preserve, and keep keep doing. And uh, so, you know, if we start to understand blue mind, it's best to really understand red mind, which is our, our new normal as modern humans. We're anxious, we're distracted, we're um, running to try to stay in one place, but slipping backwards many times. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of these things, these supercomputers that are always telling us things. Um, stressing us in different ways, making us feel inadequate or um, breaking our hearts really uh, all day. Um, and that's our new normal. And it doesn't seem like it's going away, but uh, so that that's anxiety. And red mind is a very, very good thing when it's pointed at good goals, you know, um, it helps you get your job done. It helps you win. It helps you compete. Uh, puts a rocket on the moon. Um, when you have to pull an all-nighter and really go for it, you know that can be great. Uh, but if you don't know how to turn it off and switch to blue mind, you will end up in gray mind. So that anxiety, that cortisol will lead to burnout at the cellular level, um, at the social level. Uh, you will just, you know, you'll quit. Your your mind and your body will say done, and that's that's gray mind. That's burnout. And I've been there, um, and most people I know have, know exactly what that feels like. Um, so it's not a good thing. It's not it's not a goal. <laughs> uh, it's it's wide widely considered a, a bad idea to burn out, but we do it. Uh, and so blue mind is is really part of, of a wellness toolkit. Um, it helps us manage the anxiety, the stress, cortisol, uh, the breakdown, keeps us out of gray mind. And really when we, when we, even when we close our eyes and start thinking about going to the water, we start to feel calm. Our, our heart rate slows, our breathing rate slows, our skin temperature starts to cool even 
merely by thinking about our swim uh, or our jumping in the water. Uh, when we when we get to the water, visually, uh, things are simplified. So we're not processing all that incoming visual information, um, signs and screens and words. Uh, auditorily, things are simplified, generally. So you're listening to the sound of the water, um, not sirens and dogs barking and chatter that maybe maybe occurs in your workplace or so there's very little automobile traffic. <laughs> um, so visually and auditorily simplified, you get that bandwidth back. Uh, as you slip into the water, somatically, you give up gravity. So you're not dealing with that. And we're both dealing with that right now. You know, you're so you're right now your brain is processing whatever's coming off the screen plus whatever else is in the room. It's processing my voice, my words, my language. You're processing your response. Uh, you're thinking ahead in this interview, like, is this going the way I hoped, hoped it would? Or am I just going to scratch it? Or what's my next question? And um, so that's all going on. And this is re extremely relaxing. Uh, and your body is coordinating a couple hundred muscles to keep you in that position that you're in right now. And this is relaxing, you know, amp it up times five, you know, when you're, really stressed and in doing you know in in your business uh and you have more screens around and maybe some traffic and more people and that's our new normal so when you get to the water and get back that bandwidth uh that cognitive bandwidth that emotional bandwidth by getting to the water and getting in the water it's glorious and it's and you don't just turn off and go to sleep you switch into this mind state that i refer to as blue mind uh, and there are lots of other terminologies for it. Um, and what you find is an increase of creativity and an increase in compassion, maybe even a little bit more courage, uh, connection, all these great C words. Um, we care more about each other and ourselves and nature when and we have that, you know, when we turn off that spigot of stress. Um, we come up with creative solutions to problems that we're trying to solve. Uh, I know so many swimmers that pop out of the water and they've got the answer to the question that they got in the water with. And hopefully they have some way to jot it down, you know, because sometimes it just slips away right after you get out of the, the water or the shower, uh, the lake, you know, the ocean, the pool. Um, so that's kind of how, how it all works. And, Mind can be any body of water, uh, wild or domestic. It can be in your home, um, but it can also be in the city as a fountain or an urban waterfront. It can provide some uh, some forms of blue mind experiences, um, but it can also be uh, virtual water. So, a song, your favorite song about water, a film, uh, a book. Pick up a good book by tim winton just dive into that thing and yourself and your blue mind just through words on a page um it can be you know art poetry um a recording of the ocean that you made is a great virtual source of water uh, helps you sleep helps you slip into sleep and uh and then the imaginary water that's you know close your eyes and think of the water you love, uh, these powerful things we have uh, between our ears that allow us to imagine and pull up memories and feel it, like really feel it. Um, of course, not a substitute for the real thing, but in a pinch, <laughs> you know, on a crowded bus or something, if you close your eyes and put on your put on your headphones and listen to the the recording you made and imagine you're about to go for a swim, well, that's. You know, that's medicine right there and you know no side effects and it's free you, know? you mention it when you can't be near the water one of my favorite movies um breathe by tim winton there's a beautiful closing sequence and i think it's tim winton that's actually narrating it and he's talking about how he gets out into the ocean whenever he can this character and surfs whenever he can and 
what does he say? I'm just, I'm just free and I'm just dancing. And I've, I've seen it probably 30, 40 times. It still gives me goosebumps because I watch it and go, <laughs> that takes me back to my childhood. It takes me back to my childhood and just that, as you say, that freedom and you're completely stripped back. You're just your wetsuit or your budgie smugglers or whatever. And you just, yeah, it's, it doesn't get any simpler than that, but it doesn't get any more beautiful than that either. It's true. It's so true. And the world is creeping into um, our lives in so many different ways to, um, you know, diminish that sense of freedom. And it turns out the water is still there waiting. You know, your, your iPhone or your smartphone doesn't like the water still, thankfully. <laughs> it's Absolutely. not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's still the it's still a place where you can go and feel free, and feel solitude, and feel, um, you know, like you're getting away, um, some privacy, you know, um, wow, what a, you know, what what should we invest in protecting that? Well, everything, mm -hmm. everything you have, mm -hmm. uh so that we can maintain this place where you can feel peace and freedom and solitude and privacy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause that's sanity as well. That comes along with those things. Um, and so much of our technologies in modern life are diminishing all of those things, our peace and our freedom and our solitude and our privacy. There's no struggle anymore. Is there with so many things and, the ocean, it's it's a good struggle, isn't it? Like you mm -hmm. <laughs> body surfing or diving through <laughs> waves. You there's not much else you can focus on, is there? You just gotta make sure you get through yeah. the wave, come up, take your breath. Yeah. Well, it, I think that's that's a really important point there because um it's not always about convenience and comfort. And that's what we're being sold as the you know, the highest of, of achievement is that things become more convenient comfortable and there's you know there's a, a piece of it that is inconvenient and uncomfortable which is why it's so great you know there are days that you're like i don't want to get out of bed and the cold water you don't because if, if it was convenient and comfortable to get out of bed and hop in an icy cold rough ocean well it wouldn't it wouldn't work <laughs> it would, you know, there's a there's an aspect to it that is uh you're you're pushing through and in that against you know your your core instinct to stay stay nice and cozy in bed and, and get a cup of coffee and get back in bed um so that's that's a yeah i'm, I'm glad you touched on that that's a an important part of it you know but mm. um surely it's why we have <laughs> so much unhealthiness you know, more hospitals, more dietary mm -hmm. supplements. We don't need any of that if we just strip back and struggle a bit. We, it's true. It's true. And that's, you know, available. that's really, you know, it's part of, I think, the, um, you know, the rise of, of cold, cold water, open water swimming that you mentioned during the pandemic. Uh, I think it has to do with that. I think people in, instinctively, innately knew that, you know, not moving and staying indoors and eating delivered food and um having the temperature never change was killing them yeah uh, along you know obviously there's there's this virus uh and uh illnesses but that aside um which is a, a big thing to put aside i do i do know um that stagnation and um, not changing the temperature um, is making us not just soft, but um, it's killing us. And mm. a quick solution is to jump out the door and head to the water and, you know, shiver a bit um, and see people, you know, have some kind of socially, socially distanced um, freezing little interaction there. Um, we, Jerry, yeah. we've had, so we, we swim year round down here. So the water gets down to about sort of nine or 10 degrees Celsius. 
um, in its coldest parts. But probably the most enjoyable time where I live to swim is around autumn when it's about 13, 14, but it's when its weather's the most stable and clear. We've had, like, we're right in a metropolitan city. We've had pods of dolphins swim around us. Mm. And then that's, I don't know, is that, does, that an, does that add an extra element to the blue mind? Because they swim underneath us, they look at us with this smile on their face, and then they swim off with this grace that makes us feel completely insignificant with what we're doing swimming-wise. Does that, is that another connection? Definitely. I think the element of surprise uh, is, is part of it. Um, Especially if you're, you know, it, it may be a very surprising activity the first time you go, even without the dolphins. Mm. And, and, you know, over time and repetition, the, you know, the surprise diminishes. But the great thing about wild waters, you just don't know what's going to happen. Mm. Uh, you don't necessarily, you don't know how, what the waves and the currents are going to be like. The temperature is changing. The color is changing uh, with the seasons and the time of day. Um and then there's all the other life that's in there with you. So, and maybe a, simply a crab that swims by, uh, or in the Monterey Bay might be an, an otter, a sea otter, and dolphins and whales and birds and fish jumping. And um, so the the research is is emerging that shows that you know being looking at water is good for us, but when there's um, some biodiversity, it's better. And um, the nautical term fetch, you know, the you know the the distance the wind travels over the water makes the waves bigger. Uh, it's kind of like that. So the longer you stay there, the more the benefits, the less screen time, the less stress. Uh, and so you're maybe compelled to stay around longer and enjoy it more um, and come back again when it's interesting. Uh, but not in an overloading kind of way that just is completely frenetic and haphazard and stressful, which is sort of the screen world and kind of what we're escaping. So um, the ocean beautifully supplies us with exactly what we what we need, what we crave, which is that the surprise, the element of surprise, and the surprise comes in the form of a dolphin or a, some other wildlife or... Uh, a wave, an unexpected, you know, shift uh, in the ocean or beautiful colors. Um, so yes, abs absolutely. And here's a really sort of mundane application of that. Uh, if you have some, some water or ocean art in your home, um, move it because I bet you, you don't notice it anymore because it's been hanging in that spot for years. Yeah. And so just move it, put it in the bathroom just rest it on a counter. You don't even have to put another hole in the wall. Just move it. And you'll see it again differently in that new place. And it's, again, it's free. That's easy. Or swap it. Take that painting that you aren't noticing anymore and swap it with the other one. And just by putting it in a different place, it's like it's it resets the painting in a way. And uh, bonehead simple move there. Mm. But it's it does it. And it's kind of like the dolphin showing up and surprising you during your swim, just like it's glorious. And you, it just invigorates everyone. And, um, and then that carries forward into your imaginary water, you know, next week, close your eyes and think about those dolphins and it takes you back, uh, in a, in a mild way. Um, you can tell that story. And then when you tell the story, you're sharing it. And some, you know, you told you just told me it made me feel really good. Mm. Uh, so you, I don't know whether this is. Uh, I'm becoming more and more a believer of how the universe is watching and what we put out, we get back. And so, my dear friend Kendra, uh, when she was very young, lost her brother, and the very first time dolphins ever came near us, it was her. Uh, late brother's birthday anniversary and she didn't tell us this but she had a bit of a tearful moment to herself and then she pulled herself together and swam with us the dolphin focused on her only swam around her mm. and i don't know whether that's something of the universe or sensing but it was it was unbelievable
take it when it comes. And so uh, um, always, yeah, wow. Yeah. With your book, you talk about fishermen as well. And, and what I mean by that is you don't, I mean, I, you don't actually have to be in the ocean to get the blue mind, do you? So it's, you know, it can be sitting on the beach watching the waves, mm -hmm. can't it? Or as you say, mm -hmm. fishing or on a boat. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in the water, do you? No, it's it's a well, the very, very long subtitle of the book um, puts it near, in, on, or under. I think that covers it. Uh, uh, and yes, all of all of those. Um, and sometimes you go through all four of those in the process of, of doing your thing. You get near the water, you get in the water, you get on, or you get on it, in it, under it, um, or any of them. You know, so it's my mom she has a lifelong fear of water that began in childhood after being dunked in a swimming pool unfortunately and she doesn't want to get in the water she definitely doesn't want to go under the water probably doesn't want to go on the water because the fear of that she'll end up in or under it but she likes to be near it and she likes the second floor balcony with a margarita looking at the water it makes her very happy it's her happy place. She likes to be near the water watching us swim as kids. Um, terrified of going snorkeling with me. And I took her to the Galapagos and it was very difficult to get her. Um, actually, I had to put her on my back to snorkel to see some turtles. And she had me in a chokehold. And it was, I'm glad we did it. But it wasn't, I'm not going to say it was pleasant for anybody. Uh, we did it. Um, check that off the list. It was, it was a life goal of mine that, do that and there we we did but she's much happier watching um people do those activities from the shore uh, from the second floor balcony uh and that's okay you know it's not a not telling people what they have to do it's and again back to what's your water how do you like your water how do you like to approach this um that said a challenge yourself you know um, that was a challenge for her to get in the water with me. I, you know, she, I got her in a wetsuit and she did not care for the, having a snorkel in her mouth and a mask on her face. So I just said, get on my back and got in the water and found a bunch of turtles and they popped up all around us. And she screamed, you know, she screamed turtle, Jay, there's turtles. Like, well, I know. Cause I have my face underwater looking for them in order to be in that location. Um, but it, you know, that's her, that was her way of doing it. She's not a cold open water swimmer, barely likes, you know, to get into a swimming pool. Um, but looking at it. So uh, it just, you know, you, what I often do uh, with people individually is create something that I call blue scription. And it's just kind of a, a quick process and an inventory of where they are, what water they can get to in terms of the wild water, the domestic water, the urban water, uh, the virtual water, and imaginary water. And we kind of come up with a plan to do Blue Mind every day that works, that isn't, you know, a distant tropical ocean and free diving. If they have a tight budget and they don't know how to free dive. It would be ridiculous to promote that for them. So it may be a combination of, you know, their own bathroom and a public swimming pool and a short trip to a lake or a river or an ocean or a float spa once in a while and make the list of things and then endeavor to do something with that every day. Uh, and, uh, I call it a blue scription and, and people love it because it's, it's built out of where they are. Um, not some, some pipe dream that's far away. Jay, favorite beach? Well, like they say, the, whatever beach I'm on, <laughs> whatever beach I can get to. Um, that said, uh, uh, there's a beach called Greyhound Rock Beach close to our, the, our family home. Uh, our, our land now because we lost our, our home in the wildfires. Uh, 
but I love that beach because there's a protected area to swim no matter what the weather is because this thing called Greyhound Rock is a small island that at low tide you can walk out to and high tide you can't or need to swim out to. Um, and so you can either be, you know, in the North or South of that, that small island and, and it's calm. Um, it's hard, a little bit tricky to access. So it tends to be clean and quiet, uh, great tide pools. Um, and it's the closest, closest beach. It's a, it's a marine protected area as well. And it's the closest beach to, to our property, uh, in California. So, um, that one stands up the top of the list uh, for all those reasons. And you mentioned earlier, um, you obviously have a lot of great memories and are looking to make more with it. It's a beautiful thing to watch people enjoy the water too, isn't it? Say so your kids as well. Yeah. Introduce them to the water. When those, when that light turns on, um, and someone has that formative experience and you see it happen and you're, and if you're involved in it, uh, it's great. And, you know, you throw in a sea turtle and it's epic. I love, I love watching people see a sea turtle for the first time. Mm. It's my favorite. If I'm, um, if I could just be a sea turtle guide for people who have never seen one, I'd, for the rest of my life, I'd be, be a happy man. Uh, it's just great to see people light up in the water in the presence of a, a beautiful animal um, that feels big and wild, but also is, is safe in a very inert kind of way. Not a lot of sea turtle attacks going on um, in either direction. So, <laughs> What's next for you? What's coming up in 2024 as far as all your activities and promotions and... Uh... There are a couple of things. One, um, it's the 10th anniversary of the publication of Blue Mind, and I'm working on sort of an update, uh, a ton a ton of footnotes being added to the text. I don't want to disrupt the book too much. I like it. Um, worked hard and edited it a lot 10 years ago, uh, but I'm going to add some footnotes to bring in some new science. So those who want to dig a little deeper and flip around and catch up on some of the a decade of research that confirms and doubles down on this concept uh, and a new chapter it might, might be in the form of, of an afterword. Um, but so a 10th anniversary edition will come out late this year. And um, it's a, an opportunity also to reflect on all the programs, the surf therapy programs and the open water swimming programs and the cold plunge efforts and float spas and um, all the different aquatic therapies modalities that have emerged this past decade, um, healing people and in turn helping to heal the planet. Uh, so it's an opportunity to reflect a bit on, on that and celebrate, you know, the, the decade of, of work. Um, and uh, we do an annual Blue Mind Summit uh, that will be our 14th we did several before the publication of the book. And where are they? Um, they it moves around the world uh, and probably will be in Southern. I can't really announce it publicly yet, but uh, Southern California and it possibly, I guess, will be the way I'll say it, will be combined with the International Surf Therapy uh, Conference. Um, that's an unofficial statement that I just made there. <laughs> Well, your book, it's uh, funny, I, uh, a colleague and friend of ours, Lisa, uh, I think she's she talks about your book a lot and looking at her social media, I think she's actually living in the ocean. I'm not sure if she's <laughs> coming out or not, or maybe just out for a sandwich. <laughs> Up for a breath or two once in a while. <laughs> she's got, I think her dog's got the blue mind as well. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, when's the next family catch up? When's the next family beach session? Well, um, I have a daughter who just began this year, one semester in, uh, began university in Spain. Oh, wow. So we're plotting our next trip to Spain. 
um, and some other family Williams. members. Yeah, that's uh, that's on on the list. I, some other family members are um, young family members are doing semester abroad in Barcelona. So we're head, we're in the early scheming of how do we go hook up with Julia, drag her over to Barcelona, and then perhaps San Sebastian. Um, extended hopefully uh visit to spain and um so that that should be good i'm looking forward to that this did spring sometime yeah jay you said something earlier on and i it's really stuck with me and i think it's something that will resonate with everyone in that the approach to educate and convince people of why our oceans and rivers and other bodies of water are so important is that they are actually our source and they provide us with their our lifeline aren't they so why would we continue to damage them i think that was a really poignant thing that you said and certainly a good way to communicate to people if they know that it how directly it affects them it's true and it's so true i mean it and um the the convincing with loads of factoids is almost unnecessary because you, if you do it, you know it. And uh, I think we should just talk about it more and make sure we kids hear it at school every day. And day one of school all the way through high school, college, graduate school, it should be part of our, our conversation. It is that important. Um, so how you weave that into curriculum, I, you know, give the tools to the teachers and let them run because it's going to be slightly different in Victoria as it is in uh, Chicago, as it is in California, as it is in Oklahoma. And um, so slightly, slightly adjust to the local waters, but tell the same story, I think. Uh, and if that becomes uh, knowledge, in common practice and everyone has access to their blue mind um, we change the world in a very good way and by common knowledge and practice i mean 8.1 billion of us uh, know what we're talking about here that would be cool um so that's what i mean what am i up to this year that's what I, that's that's what i'm doing uh little by little you know um and uh, handing handing off the things I know to uh, people like Lisa, you know, and her dog, yeah, <laughs> and you, yeah. you know, just take this and run, you know, do creative, cool things where you are with this, and um, stand tall, you know, if science has your back. You know, you know. Mentioned earlier about um, Tim Winton's movie. Um, and how beautiful it was with the ocean and the closing scenes. Um, we were also just talking then about another movie called My Life is a House um, with Kevin Klein. Really great. I think it was early 2000s it came out, but there's this beautiful scene where uh, Kevin Klein, um, before he drifted from his son and before they drifted back together, there's this beautiful footage of him in the ocean. And it's, again, I'm assuming, I'm sure you will explain it, another extension of the blue mind in that, his son, the the bond between he and his son, where he's he's holding his son in the ocean because he's too little to be there by himself. What what what's all that? How how can we relate that? Yeah, to the, my mind. Well, there's you know there's so there's so many um, songs, books, and film and films and films are especially interesting. The the blue mind theme shows up again and again and um water um whether it's james bond going to a scottish river after his whole world has just burned and blown up he goes to the river to reset or uh the great film shawshank redemption the uh, closing uh, scene <laughs> it, yes. morgan freeman yes he says i hope I hope the ocean would be as blue as it was in my dreams. Yes, I hope. Exactly. And, he, and he, he's walking the beach. The camera pans way, way, way up. He gets very small. 
roll credits. That's the end of the film. It's this beautiful blue mind moment. His name is Red. His character's name is Red, and he's been incarcerated, and he's been dreaming. His dreams of the ocean are from prison, and so it's just the ultimate blue mind moment. But the list is long. There's, you know, Shape of Water and great, great Academy Award winning films. Uh, the film Moonlight uh, is another one, Academy Award winning film. Um, it just goes on and on. And I have this dream someday that water will win a Lifetime Achievement Award, ah. a Lifetime Achievement Oscar, and that everybody who has ever acted in, directed, produced one of these Academy Award winning films where water is the protagonist, clearly the protagonist of the film mm. will celebrate together the role water has played in their films. I think that would be like a breakthrough moment um, to share this, this idea that water takes us up and it takes us down and it heals us and it makes the scene in the film, but it makes our lives because our these aren't scenes, these are lives. And that, they- that, that scene that you mentioned in Shawshank, it is beautiful because as much as you get the image, you've been through this really, I mean, an interesting movie, but a pretty graphic, pretty traumatic path. And when I watched the end of that, it, like, as you say, the voiceover of what um, uh, the actor says, what's his name? Morgan Freeman. Freeman says, yeah. But yeah. And of course, he has with, a great voice. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you're also left with the image of, and I love it because I think about, oh, they'll catch up. They'll have a chat. They'll have a beer, um, but he is like back they're, as you say, they're reborn, they're rebirth. They're back to the ocean. Red's never been to the ocean, but you, it's so nice to envisage what's going to happen for the next, however many years yeah. that they're by the beach. It's such a spiritual moment right there. And it's, and it's such a simple form and it's two guys reuniting at the ocean mm -hmm. after, after going through hell, you know, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so that you know the symbology of water in, in film is it's you know there's blue mind everywhere I guess mm -hmm. is my point and Hollywood knows it mm -hmm. marketers know it they sell mediocre beer by showing you the ocean like in the case of yeah. Corona mm -hmm. um, they've built an entire brand on looking at the ocean and listening to the sound and little else. Yeah. Um, and it's not even, you know, great beer. It's mediocre. So not not to beat up on Corona, but uh, it's um, so the marketers know it, the filmmakers know it, musicians know it. And so let's kick the door open on this and make sure it becomes something that everybody knows and kind of dig a little deeper uh, into it. Yeah. And then that Academy Award for water, you know, would be a nice thing <laughs> you're going to accept the award on behalf of water oh no way uh, i think it's a group <laughs> a group thing there's going to be eight billion of us accepting yeah. that award that's how that goes <laughs> dr wallace j nichols that sounds very formal or jay <laughs> yeah you are an extraordinary person and uh everything you do read say teach give is extraordinary and uh I love your book, Millions of People Do. Thank you for everything that you do and good luck on this continued journey. And uh, we here at the Bear Facts, we're thrilled and so grateful that you were able to take some time out of your busy schedule to join us today. It's truly my pleasure and I uh, love talking to you, really, really. Uh, good questions and brilliant insights and um it's very calming as well well <laughs> i'm just about to go and get stressed and pack the car with my wife we're <laughs> heading down the coast for 12 days but the process to get into the car is i think it's red mine <laughs> yeah it's good that's fine yeah that's that's the appropriate use of red mine <laughs> get it done get it packed get down the road mm -hmm. dr wallace j nichols of the amazing book, Blue Mind. Thank you so much for joining us. Guys, please look at my socials. There'll be plenty of details up. I'm not going to put up an actual date when we release this because it's so special. We're going to work on it and make sure that it's perfect before we bring it out. Thank you again, Jay. Excellent. Uh, thank you. Thank you.